Although many people in Canada might see the Niagara Escarpment as just a place to do fun activities such as cliff diving in Bruce Peninsula or taking the ferry out at Niagara Falls, the Niagara Escarpment is actually a very interesting geologic wonder. With a surface area of over 190,000 hectares, the Niagara Escarpment was designated by UNESCO as a World Biosphere Reserve in 1990. This means that its landscape is protected for over 725 kilometers from Queenston Heights near Niagara Falls, along the Niagara River, to the slopes of Blue Mountains, and to the eastern coastline of the Bruce Peninsula and Fathom 5 National Marine Park. The escarpment as a whole takes on a horseshoe shape whose eastern end lies in the state of New York near Rochester. The escarpment runs east towards Lockport near Lake Ontario, where it intersects the Niagara River in Lewiston, New York, before continuing into Queenston, Ontario. The escarpment continues east towards Hamilton before banking northwest towards Oslers Bluff and Blue Mountain. The escarpment then moves northwest through Owen Sound and up to Tobermory, where it sinks below the waters, creating the islands of Manitoulin, Coborn, Drummond, and St. Joseph's. The western end of the horseshoe continues around Lake Michigan and ends in Wisconsin. We already explained the definition of an escarpment as... Escarpment is a long steep slope, likely one at the edge of a plateau. It often separates two areas of land that are found at different heights. That's the dictionary definition. If you want to find another one, go on your own. This is simple enough for what we're doing here, but anyway. But now we're going to get into it a little more. The Niagara Escarpment is specifically classified as an erosional escarpment meaning that it was formed by differential erosion wherein softer underlying rock is eroded under a much harder and more rigorous scarp rock. There are generally three different features that make up an escarpment, which are the brow or edge of the escarpment, where the gradient of land at the top shifts from gradual to steep, usually marked by a cliff or bluff. The face, which encompasses the steep section between the top and bottom of the escarpment, and the base, which lies at the bottom, where the gradient switches back from steep to more flat. The Niagara Escarpment Corridor spans two major biomes, these being boreal needlely forests in the north and temperate broadleaf forests in the south, and represents the largest contiguous area of primarily forested land in south-central Ontario. This displays the greatest gradient variation in southern Ontario, with biomes dispersed in more than 430 meters of elevation and featuring great lakes, coastlines, cliffs, tailor slopes, wetlands, woodlands, crevices, waterfalls, alvars, oak savannas, amongst many others. The characteristic sedimentary bedrock of the Niagara Escarpment was formed approximately 450 million years ago via the deposition of organic matter derived from marine sediments within a warm shallow inland sea that covered the relevant area. When these marine organisms died, their remains, shells or skeletons, which were made principally of calcium carbonate, sunk to the bottom of the sea, leaving materials that got hardened into limestone. Because such marine organisms consisted of the most primitive of known animals and plants, the resultant rock fossils that we see today are considered Paleozoic. So the warm inland sea was formed in a depression of the Earth's crust that was centered in what is now present-day Michigan, USA. The bedrock geology of the region features multi-layer thickness of mari, clay, sand, and petrified remains of saltwater organisms with multiple layers of characteristically softer limestones, shales, sandstone, and dolostone. These rock layers are therefore subject to erosion and deposited significant products to the glaciers that existed, which contribute to the fertile soil of the Niagara region. These sites were then shaped by erosional processes and glaciation to form a dolostone ridge with a low-grade slope on one side and a steep scarp or cliff on the other. Now that we understand the full scope of the Niagara Escarpment, we can get into the numerous geologic formations that are seen in different regions of the Escarpment. We'll get into these regions later, but first, let's talk about these different formations and what they're comprised of, and how they can be spotted. First, let's talk about the Lockport Amabel Formation. Developed in the Middle Silurian period, the Lockport Formation consists of, among others, the Gasport and Goat Island members. Gasport sections consist of grey crystalline dolomitic limestone, which is poorly bedded, porous, and up to 45 feet thick. The Goat Island section consists of light grey dolomite bedding, with layers of blue-grey dolomite near the top. 
The section is also characterized by its conchoidal fractures and presence of gypsum, calcite, and sphalerite. The Lockport Formation is also characterized by its very hard rocks, which are similar to limestone, and have resisted erosion and accordingly protected beds of softer layers beneath it. Next, we can move on to the Clinton Formation. The Clinton Formation has many members that include the Deque and Irondequoit sections consisting of dense dolomite and dense dolomitic limestone that is red to gray color, respectively. This middle formation is often very inconsistent throughout the escarpment, so we'll soon get into where we can see different formations in the middle. Lastly, and probably most prominently, we see the Queenston section. Although there are many formations, one other distinct formation is the Queenston section, which stands out because of a shale composition and brick red color, making it easier to spot wherever it's exposed. The stratigraphy of the Niagara Escarpment between Hamilton and Collingwood is said to be the most consistent. It features seven rock formations and is very much informed by the deposit environment that has impacted its various thicknesses, including the Queenston Rock Formation that pervades the entire escarpment, which is over 200 meters thick at the Niagara Gorge created during the Ordovician period. The Cabot Head Rock Formation, which is at the base of the Bruce Peninsula where it's 36 meters thick and is made up of Silurian clay shale. It is known for its plasticity when wet. And lastly, the Amabel Rock Formation, which is highly phospholiferous and grades into Lockport Formation to the south and constitutes the cap rock of the Niagara Escarpment. The Niagara Escarpment has several connections to human use and settlement. Several municipalities in Ontario are located along the escarpment. One of these is Hamilton, where half of the city is located upon the escarpment, whereas the other half of the city is located below it. It is the role of these municipalities to grow and expand their communities in the most responsible way whilst considering the environment, economics, and sustainability, amongst other aspects. Local residents lead a wide variety of lifestyles that may or may not involve the escarpment in a wide variety of ways. Moreover, there are cultural connotations that are associated with the escarpment. It holds great significance for indigenous populations. There have been many challenges in balancing human activity with preserving the natural wonders of the escarpment. And this, is, and this pertains to an overarching concept of sustainability. We must consider cultural sustainability in, turn, in the context of preserving sacred land for the indigenous populations that have inhabited this, our lands for thousands of years. We must also consider environmental sustainability, as when left alone, the natural features of the escarpment can produce wonders in terms of mitigating climate change, cleaning the air, providing drinking water, and in terms of many other environmental aspects. However, due to the ever-present nature of human activity, it is never left alone. One must also consider social sustainability, as in the nature of human expansion, its benefits, and its drawbacks. Finally, economic sustainability is connected to each of the other types of sustainability as it deals with how the area's large agricultural industry is managed in this context. There are several little known facts about the escarpment, namely pertaining to the biodiversity that is found in the region. The Niagara Escarpment is home to the oldest trees in eastern North America, namely the eastern white cedar tree that are over a thousand years old. It is also home to 40% of Ontario's rare flora. Additionally, it is home to 325 bird species, 37 species of orchids, 55 mammal species, 90 species of fish, and 36 reptile and amphibian species. One of the most famous of the latter types of species is the endangered Jefferson salamander. Finally, most of the world's population of the North American subspecies of hearts tongue fern is located on the Niagara Escarpment. Another fun fact is that Niagara Falls, one of North America's most popular tourist attractions, is also located upon the escarpment, as this escarpment is most widely known for being the cliff that the Niagara River flows off, thus forming the famous waterfall that we know today. Several sedimentary rocks make up the geology of the falls. There are different layers of sedimentary rocks, which include layers of limestone, shale, sandstone, and dolostone, as we have discussed in relation to the geology of the escarpment as a whole. Some of the rock layers, such as the soft, easily eroded rocks of shale below the capital falls, contain many marine fossils, namely brachiopods, trilobites, corals, and crinoids, on account of the ocean that helped form the escarpment during the Silurian period. Over geologic time, the falls region has changed drastically via glacial processes from the Ice Age as well as erosion, and it will continue to change, as evidence has indicated that the Niagara River seems to be migrating upstream, meaning that thousands of years from now, it will erode the softer rocks that are found upstream along the escarpment, 
and we may no longer have the faults that we see today. The geology of the escarpment can thus be said to be fluid, and a study will be of great interest over time.